Hello everyone, my name's Jack Sorrell, and today, let's have a look back at the old GameCube. One of the first things you'll notice about the GameCube is that this console's pretty cubey, as the name suggests, but it's not actually a perfect cube. Measuring the dimensions reveals it's actually 6 inches by 4.3 inches, so not a perfect cube, but it's cubey enough for me. This console was considered to be pretty powerful at the time, and we can still see which games this console handles perfectly, but which other consoles may have struggled to run if they were made for them. A good example is F-Zero GX, a quick reaction based racing game. This game runs at a solid 60fps in 480p widescreen, which allowed for 29 computer controlled racers for you to play against. That's a massive number of CPUs, considering Mario Kart 8 Deluxe from 2017 only allows for 11 CPUs, and Super Smash Bros Ultimate from 2018 just has a maximum of 8. Having fewer CPU characters doesn't make certain games worse, but having 30 fully 3D model cars being displayed on the screen at the same time during a race, while being controlled by the console itself is pretty impressive, especially for a console as small as the GameCube. It certainly is a baby sized console, compared to the PS2 and original Xbox which was sizably larger and used far more surface area than our cube. When Shigeru Miyamoto was showing off the new GameCube at E3 2001, he described the size just like that. Let me introduce you to a new baby. <laughs> One of the most well known achievements the GameCube is known for is the controller. The GameCube controller is still considered to be one of the best controllers of all time, and is even supported by the Nintendo Switch, which was released 15 years after the old GameCube. Not only did it set the standard for game controllers, with its layout being extremely similar to controllers we know and love today, such as the Xbox One controller, which was released in 2013, and the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, released in 2017, Nintendo even released a wireless version of the GameCube controller, called the WaveBird, which shows just how important the GameCube was for its time in the industry, and how it shaped the current lineup of controllers available from the big manufacturers today. It was the console that was home to some of the hit games such as Super Smash Bros Melee, Super Mario Sunshine, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and many other massively popular games, some of which were completely remade or ported over to more recent Nintendo consoles. It was the console you could carry around like a lunchbox, using the handle on the back, and it was the console where modding and homebrew really started to kick off. Before the GameCube on the Nintendo 64, modding was a thing back then, but it was really just all cheat codes, flashcards, and cartridge pass-through adapters, which could dump games and save files. Dumping or ripping a game is the process of copying the game files stored on a disc or cartridge, and putting them on a hard drive or some other storage device. It's mostly the same for dumping save files, but in the N64's case, its saves are stored on an external storage drive called a memory card or memory pack. With Homebrew on the GameCube, you can do all that and lots more. If you know about more cool things you can do with Homebrew on the Nintendo 64, let me know in the comments below. Similar to the benefits you get by homebrewing a more recent Nintendo console, the GameCube can run a small selection of emulators, and with the power of the GameCube behind them, most of these emulators can run smoothly. NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, GBA, PS1, Neo Geo, CDZ, Atari 2600, and possibly more emulators are available online, which you can download and then load onto your GameCube to play compatible games. We've still got a lot more to talk about in this video about Homebrew on the GameCube, but if you want to see my next video, where I demonstrate how to install Homebrew and emulators on your GameCube, then subscribe to my channel right now. There aren't that many emulators for the old GameCube, but you have to remember, that the DS and the huge amount of games on newer consoles weren't exactly around at the time for the GameCube to emulate, and these were the early days of modern homebrew after all, and the GameCube wasn't very popular with gamers or homebrew developers, selling only 22 million units, compared to the PlayStation 2's 155 million units. That's a massive gap. One of the first console emulators I test on a new machine is a DS emulator, 
which I still can't pronounce the name of. It could be possible to emulate it on the old GameCube, but I haven't found anything on this subject. About the emulators we have though, let's test a few and see how they run. I've put this cute little setup together and put all of the emulators I'm interested in and games for them onto my GameCube. Let's start them up and see how they perform. Let's start with this NES emulator. You might recognise this emulator because you may have used it on your Wii. I'm not sure which console it came out first on, the GameCube or the Wii, but going by the interface design, it looks like they made it using design elements from the Wii. Porting homebrew apps from the Wii to the GameCube isn't as difficult as you'd expect, because the Wii is pretty much just a slightly more powerful GameCube, and uses the same processor architecture. This emulator runs perfectly on the Wii, and runs perfectly on the GameCube too. If you use a widescreen TV or monitor, I recommend changing the scaling option to 16x9 correction so you have a square screen and so it doesn't get stretched, because NES games were designed to be played in this square mode called 4x3. I have not had any problems with this emulator in this game, Super Mario Bros, or any of the other games I've tried with it. Moving on to the next emulator, we have an SNES emulator. This one looks similar to the previous emulator, and it was also made for the GameCube and the Wii. Just like with the NES emulator, I had no problems with this emulator either, and had lots of fun playing it. I must have sat there playing F-Zero for over half an hour. It's so fun on the GameCube, and the GameCube controller works well with it. I tried this game with 16x9 correction and the scaling options, but to be honest, for F-Zero, I prefer the stretch option. But maybe not for some games, it's really up to you. Next up is a Game Boy emulator. I haven't really played Game Boy games that much, apart from Kirby Nightmare Dreamland on the Game Boy Advance, so I can't really say that much about this emulator, apart from the fact that it seems to run pretty well. Moving on to an emulator which I have much more experience with, is this Nintendo 64 emulator, called Cube 64. Just like the NES emulator and the SNES emulator I've shown so far, this emulator was also on the Wii, called Wii 64. I didn't play this one very much on the old Wii, but the times I did play it, I had a pretty good experience. But Cube 64 on the GameCube doesn't run as well as Wii 64 on the Wii. When you see this icon on the screen, the game freezes for a split second and then continues. This happens quite a lot in Super Mario 64, but it happens even more in Mario Kart 64, which I'll show off in a moment. I'm not exactly sure what this icon means, but when it does appear, the game does stutter a little bit. I wouldn't say that this game's unplayable with this issue, but the frequent lag spikes are annoying, and makes the overall experience a lot less fun. In Mario Kart 64, it gets even closer to unplayable for me, and I can't say I'm having any fun playing this right now. But running Nintendo 64 games on a GameCube is a pretty big accomplishment, so I'll give this emulator that. Lastly, we have a GBA emulator, and I've chosen to test out Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland in it. When I started up the emulator, I noticed that it's much laggier than yesterday when I tested it, but then I realised I actually used a different GBA emulator, so I went back and checked the files on the SD card, and I realised I had two GBA emulators on there. So I tried the other one, and it ran perfectly. This one's called MGBA. The interface isn't as good looking, but it runs a lot smoother and faster on the GameCube. Right now it's playing really well, but I opened settings and changed the scaling. And if you ask me, it looks even better in full screen mode. So, is the GameCube a good emulation machine? Well, in some emulators, like my favourites, the NES, SNES and GBA emulators, they all run really well, but certain ones like N64 don't run so well, so it depends on what you want to play. But for a better emulation experience, I'd say use a Wii, your Android phone, or for the best experience, use a PC. But overall, I had a lot of fun trying these emulators for this video. And like I said, these are only the emulators I wanted to test out. So if you know of more emulators, definitely let me know in the comments below as well. And while you're there, let me know about your favourite piece of GameCube homebrew. Maybe it's an emulator, a tool, or some other thing. I'd love to hear it. I've been making videos on YouTube for almost 4 years now, and to celebrate the new decade, 
I've made a post in my channel's community tab so you can vote on your favourite video I've made over the past 4 years. So to vote, just click my channel name, then on my channel, click community, then vote in the poll about which video you like best. If your favourite video isn't in the poll, then tell me what your favourite video was and why in the comments, I'd really love to hear that too. If you're watching this video in the premiere, or soon after I uploaded it, then I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. My name's Jack Sorrell and I'll see you in 2020 with a brand new video.